Welcome to our second tutorial in level two, Learn Brizzy Page Builder. I am JP, and in this tutorial, we begin actually working with the Brizzy Page Builder, start building up our page. What did we do in the first tutorial? Well, we had opened our WordPress, we installed a theme, which is Page Builder Framework. Then we had set up a menu, and we had assigned this menu as a primary menu, and then we created a page and we assigned the page as our home page. After we installed the theme, we went into the customizer, we set up the logo, we changed a little bit the color, we changed the background, we disabled the footer, and then we installed Brizzy. And you remember when we went into Brizzy, we did two things. First, we changed the default template to that of the theme. So we can have the theme header, and then we changed the color palette so that we have our colors ready for our site. And just to remind you again what the site is all about, let's have a quick look here at Apollo Consultants Management Specialist. You can see the colors that we're going to be using here. We have these two purples. I'll call this a bright, sparkly purple and this more subdued purple. They probably have names, I can't think of that now. And then we're going to create these blocks. In total, we're going to create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks, 10 blocks for our footer here at the bottom. And we bring in the content. At this moment, I just want to give you a heads up that for certain things, especially like this hero image that we've done a lot in level one, I'll go much quicker. I'm not going to explain everything again and again at slow pace. If you feel I rushed over something and you think, wait, 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 what are you talking about? It's probably because we covered it in more detail in level one. So check out the YouTube channel, go check out level one, go to websitesforbeginners.com and then you can follow along with level one and practice. And I hope that with the tutorials here at Learn Brizzy Page Builder and Websites for Beginners, we can give you that opportunity. Right, let's build this hero image in Brizzy. Close this one and I'm in my dashboard. We go to pages, all pages. We had created this page in the previous tutorial home. And all I'm going to do is click on edit with Brizzy. It will open the page builder with the header from the page builder theme up here. And then to begin, we need a block. Start building your page and I grab a blank block. What I'll do from the beginning is first bring in my background image, click on the settings, go to background and image and choose the image, this one over here which I will be using select. We will bring in the content so it's difficult to judge who will be where. But what will be important for me is that this guy standing here on the left, which is probably the consultant, I want him to be at least in the image all the time. So I'll grab my focus selector here, this blue dot, and I'll put it slap bang on his face to make sure that as this block grows, his face will remain always in the image. Next to the background is the color styling. I click on that and we can apply a color theme here. So I can choose this dark one over here. But what I'm going to do is apply a gradient. Go over here to where it says solid, click on the drop down and select gradient. And you can see we have two selectors here. For this one on this side, let's choose the light one. I did put it on dark, but I'm going to go for light and then click on this one over here to give it the purple. To change the angle now of this gradient, you can do it over here where you see the degrees little symbol here. I'm going to double click and put in 315 degrees so that I can do it from this. You could have also changed the colors, swapped it around up here at the beginning to achieve this. The colors, as I look at it, is too dark. So let's go first to this dark one over here. And I'm going to reduce that to around here, 85, 84%. That's much better. It is a tendency to think it doesn't look good and then to grab this opacity slider and bring it down. And that is always going to be difficult when you try to put text over it. If your text, if you have a logo that is going to be the central part of this hero image, don't worry too much about the background. You can apply quite a high opacity, reduce your transparency because it is just for contextual values in the end your logo and the text that's going to come in here is the focus point. And you'll be surprised at how much people actually can see, even with this high opacity setting for this color. Let's do the same for this one. We click on this color for the gradient and I'm just going to slightly 92. No, I think this looks good for this 
this brighter one over here. I'll apply padding. Now, if I hover over here in the top, you see the blue bar, it says currently 75 pixels. I will click and drag this up to 120 pixels. And I'll do the same here for the bottom, hover over it until you see the blue bar, click and drag and get it to 120 pixels. That's one way to do it. The other way is to go to the block settings up here, click on settings, more settings, and then you can drag the slider here. You can see it's already at 120. This one 121, so I missed one pixel. Let's link these sliders and then double click and type in 120. We get basically exactly the same thing. For the block, we've done everything now. Our settings for the block is perfect. Click outside it and let's save our work control S, command S. I will be putting everything inside one column. The default block comes in with two columns, so we need to remove one of them. Right click within this block and then click delete. You could have done it also in the other block. Let's bring in the first element, add elements, and this is going to be our logo, which is an image. Grab the image and drop it over here. Click on it, go to image, image, and then select the logo, which is going to be this white one representing the logo. Select. The logo comes in way too big because it takes the width of the column. It will always come in from the left to the right at 100% of the column. If you click here on the settings, you will see the size is set at 100%. That size actually relates to the left to the right, your width size at 100% of the column. What I will do to make sure that this image is the right proportion is for the height. I will give it 100%. Double click and type in 100. And now I will reduce this by grabbing this slider, dragging it down, and I'm going to take it down to around 21%. Alternatively, you can also click on the image like this, and you can grab this handlebar on the right at the bottom or the left bottom, and you drag it. The only thing is you don't have a heads up display to tell you the exact percentage the image is being displayed at this moment. So if you care about that, you will have to click up here on the settings and then you can play around with it. And I'll put it back at 21%. That's it. That's great. Our logo comes in very nifty. Under it, I will put a subtitle or a upper title, whatever you want to call it. And for that, we need to bring in a text element. I'm going to grab the text element and drop it. And I'll click in it because the first thing I want to do is change the color. Click on the swatch. And as you remember, the text swatch is set to this swatch second from the right. I can choose any white, but I'd recommend not to choose this white. Remember, this one is related to the button. You could decide in the future you want to change that color. So rather not go for that, choose one of the others. And that's why I always leave these two, pure black and pure white, and don't mess around with them. So I'm going to click on this one for the white. I'll change my text next. I'm going to triple click one, two, three. And by doing it three times, you always select a sentence or a paragraph and then activate caps on your keyboard and type in the only professional option. Click on topography and then under topography, choose something like above title or subtitle. Let's, let's say this is a subtitle. This is the heading style that we want to give it as a subtitle. If I click on it, it will apply the default subtitle in Brizzy at this moment, but this is not how I want it to look. To go and change these values for the subtitle, go to styling, and here you will see all those different styles in these boxes. You look for the one that says subtitle and you click on that. Currently, the subtitle is set at Noto Serif, which is not what I want. The great thing is as I make changes here, you will see the changes effect over here. Scroll up, scroll down until you see Quattrocento Sans, and this is the one I will be using for the subtitle. Click on that, and now I can make changes to the size, the weight, the line height, and the letter spacing. I'll reduce the size to 16 pixels. The weight I will leave at normal. Line height, now whenever I work with headings, I tend to reduce the line height to one. Because it doesn't go into a paragraph, which means two or three lines, I don't have to care about line height. And putting it at one gives me more control over my layout and design options. 
I will increase the letter spacing and let's do that to where about 1.5. That's good. Let's click back on the text element and we align it here to the middle. And we've done this very nicely. I would like to move this text element closer to the logo up here. Every time we talk about distance between two elements, we achieve that with margins. I can either choose the logo or I can choose this one, the text element. And I'll just choose the text element. I click on it, choose settings, more settings, and then look for margins. Currently at the top of this container, there are 10 pixels applied. The first thing we can do is reduce those 10 pixels. I'm going to double click on it and type in zero. That should reduce some of the space. Let's see how it looks now. It looks better, but I could take it closer if I want to, just to show you. Click again on it, settings, more settings, and now I can give it a negative value, which will move it closer to the logo. And I'll give it a negative value of minus five. It will just nudge it a little bit closer to the logo. Now we bring in the text for the heading for our company. I click again in the text element and I'll change it to white first. Triple click, one, two, three, and then type in the name of the company in caps, Apollo Consultants Management Specialists. Let me just change this Apollo. This is the name of our company. This is the main part of our website. I will style this heading in a fashion that is going to be my prominent heading for every page. And usually that we call heading one. But I want you to think in terms of styling and I will show you in level three why I say think in terms of styling because there is something we refer to as HTML tags and this is not what I'm talking about. I'll just quickly show you. If you go to settings, you will see here it says HTML tag. And if you click here on the drop down, you can set it on H1, which is heading one. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking purely about styling. And this is where Breezy differs from, I think, every other page builder out there. Other page builder will take the heading styling and connect it to the HTML tag. Breezy gives you the option to mix them as you please. So let's apply the styling. We go to topography and I'll go to my topography setting, drop down and choose heading one. Again, this is not what I want. The default, as you can see, is Montserrat and I'm not going to use Montserrat for that. I can go and just make changes here and it will become what we call a custom styling. For example, if I click on no to serif now, you will see the topography changes to custom, playfair display, all of that. If I click again on the drop down and I choose heading one, it defaults to heading one. Where do we find those settings? You remember over here. So I go to styling and I look for the one that says heading one and I click on it. Montserrat, that is the default setting within Brizzy. I'm going to change this to Comforta. So I'm going to scroll down until I can find Comforta. Where are you Comforta? And when I reach the end, I will find there is no Comforta, meo Comforta. So to get Comforta, you have to go and add it. Click out here and you see up here, it says add new Google font. Click in there and type Comforta, Comforta. And then it will give you the option and you click on it. Click here on the plus to make sure it is added. Now go to heading one and you see your font that you had added appear at the top of this list. I'll click on Comforta. You can see immediately it changes. And because we are going to be working with two lines here, I'm going to reduce my line height slightly to 1.2, but I will definitely increase my letter spacing. I want this to bigger and I'll take this up to 3.5 to get that. Click back in the text element, center align it. And we're almost done. The reason I say we're almost done is because everything is a little too squashed. Remember, always think about more space instead of squeezing everything together. When you want to add space, you can do it in many ways, but we really like using the spacer within Brizzy. Go to add elements, click and drag the spacer until you see the thick gray line between the two text elements and drop it. 
there is the spacer now and if i click on it you will see the amount of pixels and i'm going to increase that to 66 pixels let's save our work Control s command s and before we go and view it we have to check our mobile and tablet responsiveness to the bottom we click here on mobile view and the first one is tablet and it looks good except i think this space is way too big for it so what i do is i click on the spacer and i can just reduce it until i think it looks better or presentable still a little too big for my taste right and let's see what is the pixel count for this one 10 pixels and this is how it will display on a tablet for phone go to the mobile view mobile and again the spacer just too much you now can choose whether you want to reduce this and i think it could be a good idea to reduce it so you only have two lines but i'm thinking in terms of someone opening their cell phone and if i make it a little too narrow it doesn't have the same impact so i prefer it like this but what i will do is i will increase the size at the bottom and at the top for the padding so i go here to the bottom you see currently the default padding in mobile view is 25 pixels i'm going to click and drag let's make that around 50 and then let's do the same for the top click and drag and we make that also 50. and this only applies to this view in mobile it's not going to affect the tablet nor the desktop if i go back tablet everything still looks the way we left it and then go to desktop same this is what we did for the desktop it's looking really good and i hear an image in one two three it's done let's save it again and then we go to the front end and have a look at how it will appear if a visitor comes to our site to do that we click on the preview button here at the bottom and it opens a, a new tab for us in our browser and here is our hero image great bananas